Welcome to the Totally Games Cast, episode 19. The sun is shining and we're in a basement, dude. We're drinking beers. Oh, oh yeah, I'm already. Oh, I drank my whole beer. Yeah, I'm already for you. Good go. Oh, dude, I'm already one deep. This is gonna be. <laughs> this is gonna be a good one. I I'm can also tell right off deep. the bat. Yo, I got a concert, so thank you for joining us. If you're watching live on twitch.tv slash totally trade, like you are, uh, thank you for joining us early. I've got a show tonight watching some EDM, so of course I have to get a little bit loosey-goosey because it's EDM. I don't oh, dude, you Don't gotta be to, sober for that. I mean, you've got to be drunk. Who are you seeing again? San Holo. San Holo. I think you, I think you, we've talked about San Holo before. He's pretty okay. I don't know nothing about San Holo. I never talked to nobody about San Holo. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, he's awesome. Awesome. We got a good show though. We're gonna be talking about uh, some more Nintendo rumors. It's that rumor Choo Choo Train George Railroad Martin. Don't bring him up yet. But uh, it's that rumor train with the new Nintendo Switch models coming out this year at some point. Um, and then some quality of life stuff updates. Qu Castlevania, Super Smash. We got that whole bunch of Fortnite news. Don't log off right now, Van. Though, because <laughs> it's uh, it's just it's like interesting updates and some weird cheater stuff. Yeah, we only do Fortnite news and Apex news when it's like real gamer news. Yeah, it's, like not just like every time it's fucking an update or something. Yeah, like yeah. that. Because I mean, who wants to hear that anyway? I actually was thinking about doing like a twenty-minute podcast on the side, just. Fortnite podcast yeah. thing to practice more talking type stuff <clears throat> since I've got so much free time. But anyways, yeah. lots of cool stuff this week. Let's dive in, son. Dude, diving in. So, remember a uh, couple episodes ago we had a uh, report come from the Wall Street Journal who always gets like the back back alley like intel on nintendo they have somebody they got a mole you know oh, mole. they do they have to they always do they always have they since even back to the gamecube the uh, wall street journals always had all the intel um they reported that there will be two new switch models this year one that was high end more powerful and one that was a lower end more focused more on the portable but could still connect to a tv lower didn't like upgrade the resolution at all because you as we all know the the handheld mode is in 720p I know, don't don't freak out though, you your PC nerds 720p? out there. 720p? Yeah. Quality. So, well, it's HD, officially HD. That's but, officially HD? Yeah. Wow, okay. That's now, why we recorded. Anything will pass is these days. Well, that's why we record in 720p, right? Well, no, we ex we um send out in 720 because not everyone can watch in 1080. Oh. Like, so, I mean, pretty much everyone <laughs> with like a normal internet connection can watch, but like if you're on mobile and stuff, like a 1080 mm. output can be like a lot of buffering for people so due to some complaints from some european people i was like okay yo we'll dial oh. it back to 720 we'll dial it back for you guys i thought it was just your weak little tower over here dude that thing dude <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding i don't want to set you on fire yet uh so then another report came out from nick guy this this last couple weeks uh reported of course which is like a japanese publication i believe but then it was reported on the verge and polygon that hey we're gonna get that new weaker model that's more like handheld centric uh as soon as as soon as june so if we're thinking june timeline wise we're looking at e3 um nintendo of course doesn't have a e3 showcase or anything but they will have a direct during e3 week so uh that's gonna be huge for our totally games cast stuff I think we should both be editing some the hell out of our video that week because it's gonna be huge. Huge. Uh, oh yeah, dude. Uh, but anyway, the other thing, the other small little tidbit that came through with this this report the la this last week was the QOL Quality of Life division of Nintendo was completely canceled. <laughs> So hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you start laughing, do you know what that is? Well, no, I don't what know what this division of Nintendo is. But okay. I know, like, a quality of life <laughs> ch change in a game usually is, like, something that makes the game better, makes it easier <laughs> to use, and it would make sense that they just got rid of oh, it. Oh, hey! <laughs> you know? Oh, hey! I mean, because they weren't delivering on the quality of Wow, life. are you kidding me? They put out <laughs> one of their best games of all time, Breath of the Wild. No, I'm not saying that they, their games are bad. Oh. But their quality of life, and you never see quality of life changes in Nintendo games because they rarely patch their games. So I just mean, like, if it's a quality of life division, what the hell were they doing? Yeah. I mean, okay. I don't know. I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain. Sure. So Sotaro Iwata, he... 
rest his, God rest his soul. I don't believe in God. I don't know why I well, said that. Did he that. die? Yeah, he died. Okay. Yeah, he had like uh, pancreatic cancer or something. Ooh, that's the oh, painful cancer too. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not a good one. Um, yeah, he had something, something like that. But anyway, he was the president of Nintendo during their best years. We. I mean, at the time, in their worst years, the Wii U. And during the Wii U, man, they were looking for other, like, revenue streams, right? They're doing horrible. The console has already been surpassed by the Switch uh, and whatnot. Anyway, they're looking to get into, like, a health market, possibly. Because in Nintendo, they actually provide health insurance. I don't know if you guys knew that. But they are such a big company and, and so valuable to, like, the economy in, in Japan. They provide health insurance to, like, they sell health insurance. So... They were looking at getting into wearables. Like, we're thinking, like, Apple Watch and all that stuff. But no, it's more like a heart monitor type thing. That, All that kind of thing. So they ended up canceling that in 2016. Shortly before or after Sotaru Iwata, he, he stepped down. So I thought that was interesting that we finally got confirmation. Well, not confirmation. Because it's all just, like, uh, rumors that are have, like, uh, somebody on the inside. But... Um, we, we finally heard the end of that story because we never, nothing ever came out. All we got was the Wii balance board. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. The Wii fit thing, yeah. whatever. Uh, I was going to say that it makes sense for them to do shit like that just because like Nintendo's done fitness stuff. You know what I mean? Right. And like, I think that it's kind of like a PR thing at the same time where they're just trying to like, okay, we, we can make video games that are good for you like, yeah. physically, you know? So I think the, it, Makes sense for them to go forward with that, but that's weird. I've never heard that. Yeah, uh, I like how you you put it. That it's like they're looking at doing something Nintendo centric with that kind of like weird segment of the of the gaming technology like group out here. But they also the reason for their canceling it is they couldn't make a Nintendo product like a Nintendo type product. Which if you know Nintendo, like all they want to do is make something that is fun like that's their number one thing sometimes they fail sometimes they <laughs> are triumphant on on that uh front but that is their number one goal that's their mo as, as a company so interesting stuff and more to come uh just like i said in june we're gonna hear so much more in june we got the squaresoft um uh presentation is happening like i think i think monday night of e3 which should be monday the 9th i believe so now we have that to look forward to uh, as much as you can, right? But we're supposed to be hearing at least about... This isn't part of the notes. I'm just going on a whim. But, yeah. Uh, well, they, in 2017, they announced the Avengers game. Okay, okay. Which is really interesting. Like, we've only had Marvel Ultimate Alliance uh, for, like, a good superhero game that is more than just, like, Spider-Man or more than just, like, one um, superhero. So something with, like, the big group of superheroes, it's interesting to see that that could be coming. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't have any details. We just saw, like, I think a video in 2017, Van, um, but... Well, I mean, there were some good X-Men games. I mean, yeah. like, so I, I don't think, like, a group superhero game is unapproachable or, like... And I, I mean, like, there was, like, good Lord of the Rings games, which are essentially, like, the characters are superheroes, you know what I mean? With kind of, like, different abilities. So Whoa. I, I mean, you could easily make, like, a hack and slash... Hold up, nice hold game. up. I love that you said that because... This month, actually, you guys, I think it's, uh, actually, I think it's the 26th, so I think it's Friday, which is hilarious, because Friday is the day Avengers officially is supposed to be coming out. Yeah, yeah. Um, is National Superhero Day. No. So, <laughs> at my work, at my work, my team does this thing, like, we always do, like, a board, because we have, like, a high traffic area, so, like, a lot of people walk by our area, and we always do, like, something interesting. Like, last week, last month, or a month or two ago now, we did, like, Featuring all of our pets in like a fun fact. So like my cat Oberon, named after Oberon Martell, he he was born in a trash can, and that's kind of a fun fact. He was literally <laughs> born in a dumpster trash can. It's one tough cat. Yeah. He was born in a barrel of gasoline. <laughs> one tough cat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you know you know Linky Link, named after the. the Legend in the Legend of Zelda. Yeah, he was um, also born behind a chain link fence. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, he uh, he can play fetch and he loves Yoshi. Dude, that's uh, we've tried to train our cats to do fetch because I'm like obsessed with the fact Link can fetch, and we spent like hours <laughs> of our lives trying to teach our cats fetch, and it is. Easier said than done. Let me fucking tell you. <laughs> like, we made zero progress. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I mean, cats have to, like, want to do it naturally or it's not happening. So I go down these winding-ass roads. We almost got to a, a goddamn 
George Railroad Martin there. Because, that was close. Yeah. I would say that we were like on the verge. We we're not pulling the trigger on it. Well, now you know it. I think it is. I think it's Friday, Van. So yes, you can look forward to National Superhero Day. Anyway, so we have the board this month, and it's National is Superhero Day themed. And so I picked my superhero. So I'm saying like, if you that you're most like, like there's a question like, who's your favorite? Who do you look up to, or like who you're most like, or what's your favorite series? So, do you you think Lord of the Rings characters are superheroes? I wouldn't call them superheroes. I'm just I was saying that like so for like a video game, there's been successful Lord of the Rings video games. Yeah. And I was saying like you can make a hack and slash Avengers game easily. You know what I mean? So I wasn't so much saying they were superheroes. I, in a way, I guess they are like uh, what's it called? Superheroes of the Dark Ages, essentially, okay. you know, but, but I like, mean, like... <clears throat> so I picked the one that I'm most like. I don't even know why I picked this. It's not even really that accurate. Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. Okay. World's most powerful or most... He's whatever. an anti-hero. In the first part of the series, for sure. I think he, like, he his main goal always is to kick the shit out of Goku. It he hates even Goku. Better. Well, when you get to Z, like, most of Z, like, the end of Z, excuse me, and most of GT and all that, he's more of a... He's definitely a hero. He's a protagonist, not an... an uh, he's an... Excuse me, antagonist. I don't but... Know, man. Sound off in the comments <laughs> if you think Vegeta is a superhero in the category. Like, you think that... And, I mean, Van even says they're super and they're heroes. So, Lord of the Rings is a superhero. I, I don't think Vegeta is. I would say that Lord of the Rings guys are more <laughs> superheroes Okay, than so he agrees that he's in the superhero category, though, as far as, like, he's he can be categorized as a super villain. That's what Van says. Okay. So, that would mean he could be a superhero, depending on how you look at the world. Yeah, true. I guess, like, depending on your alignment. So, <clears throat> what are you, like, cha chaotic evil or something? Exactly. Like, so, there you go. I hey, what's up, clams? <laughs> They're fucking hippies. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, clams. Hell yeah. Welcome, man. I'm happy you're here. So, we've... We, we just did it. We did a George Railroad Martin, but we're going to save that for, like, minute 10, maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's we're 15 minutes in, dude. Oh, shit. And yeah, we've done one story. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when I'm drinking on the cast, apparently. Uh, fuck. Uh, okay, well, this one's a quick one. Sure. So, Castlevania Anniversary Collection, out on Switch, May 16th for 20 bucks. It looks like it's got some good titles on here. Like, I have, um... Yeah, I was gonna ask. Super do, Castlevania 4. Any of these do anything for you? I mean, I, mean, I don't... I haven't played a whole lot of these, okay. so I think it would be cool to play them. I actually enjoy the newer Castlevanias more than the old ones because like that old style of video game that's like kind of like a quarter muncher style is like very frustrating yeah. like and i like kind of like the more rpg -y, uh castlevania's one yeah um i mean the original castlevania is gangster but i'm just saying like the art like when you can kind of like build your character a little more and it's not just like a one and done death and start over kind of situation they always had such cool box art and i always refer to this box <laughs> art from like the 80s 90s and <coughs> honestly even to early 2000s games uh, refer to the box art because that is where how i decide on what game to buy i get one game a month uh or two every two months like one game game boy game every month one actual console game every two months and i would use like box art i'm surprised like looking at the name Looking at the box arts of all these older games because they had some cool art uh, on the article we were I was reading that I didn't choose these games I don't I don't get it yeah so like, did I you ever buy Glover yes I oh my god you, you, you bought Glover and you didn't buy Castlevania <laughs> dude we, Glover hey, has been out. such a meme lately with me what? and this dude Sean uh, oh like, it's so funny dude Seanic or... yeah Seanic exactly uh, he uh, shout out to his channel right yeah definitely uh, he. Uh, has, he was playing through Glover and like <laughs> he was just talking about like who asked for this like why did I choose this game he's like I didn't get a game but once every two months or whatever kind of like what you said yeah and I chose Glover <laughs> like, dude I chose it because it got like an eight point something in Game Informer it was horrible no uh, dude it was no, good go back and watch that one of all the N64 games that one does not hold most up most don't hold up from that entire generation Playstation and N64 in my opinion just cause like the blockiness of them bring it up bring it up I'll, I'll try to uh, vamp for a little bit 
Well, for what? I'll vamp for this? a little bit. Bring up Glover, I thought. You were going to bring up Glover. Oh, I wasn't bring up Glover. I was going to bring up the railroad because we were talking oh, about Glover. Oh, let's do, let's do a railroad, oh, man. Hey. Yeah, railroad I love how you have elite speak to, like, spell out George Railroad. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I do all caps and negative, like, not, and negative caps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anti-caps. So, in overall, I, I do have on here that I just want to say that uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is supposed to be one of the best Metroidvanias, you know, Met Castlevania Metroid-style games that I've never played, and it's on my short list of play before you die, dude. Uh, but, hey, we got clams up in here that's showing us some Instagram funnies, so we're going to pop it up. Ultimate Customs, let's see. I know there's some really cool customs websites out there. Hell yeah, Skyzen. This guy. That's Sky. <laughs> Was a uh, Sonata of the Moon or Symphony something? of the Night? Symphony of the Night. I right? don't know why I thought Sonata. Symphony but, uh, of the Night, I believe, is what he meant. Um, my Internet Explorer. Okay, oh. yeah, sweet. That's why I was hoping you meant that because I was like, wait, I don't know. Those are uh, some pretty oh thick my god! Ones. Yeah, these are really cool. It's not porn, so we might as well pull it. Well, okay, fine. Okay, well, I guess there we there. go. There we go. Some pretty cool custom, yeah, dude. Gaming stuff. Oh my God! Look at that Bret Hart one. Holy oh, shit! Oh, this one? No, middle. You don't know your wrestlers, son. Dude. Right here, the, <laughs> the pink one. That's Bret the Hitman Hart. The greatest there is, the greatest there was, the greatest there ever will be. Oh my God, dude! <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started on wrestling, baby. Let's go. Uh, but let's pop it off with some Smash stuff. There's lots of news out there this week. Um, some weird stuff, too, with the Pro Gamer. I'll toss it to you. Okay, so um, the Ultimate Stage Builder is being used to make a bunch of dicks. Yeah. Um, Shonic, to another second plug for him. <laughs> I saw him tweet that he had made a dick himself on there. <laughs> um, so I think it's a popular like topic right now is to really be blasting those dicks in the um, Smash Bros. Uh, stage creator. So Yeah. I mean, what happens when our... Our chat and we get the ability to draw on Jackbox. I mean, it's the best thing to draw. It's a dick. It's uh, I mean, you give me a permanent marker in a bathroom, there might be a dick on the wall. I mean, <laughs> there's probably already a few. There's probably already a. I'm gonna probably out, try to outdo it and draw a bigger ones. Yeah. So I mean, more veins. Just you more need hair. A friend. Dicks need friends. You know how it is. Oh yeah. So with that comes this weird situation where like somebody that actually made a normal like awesome stage. But they included the trans flag in okay. the stage, okay? So first off, before like any any uh, <laughs> anyone goes crazy on that, um, it gets removed. Like anyone has any personal opinions on that whole situation, whatever. Um, but it gets removed completely. Nintendo cited that in their um, terms of service, so the TOS said that you can't have political uh, political commentary or whatever, something like that. But I don't think that the trans flag is political. I mean, that's just my thoughts. Uh, I know that other people have other opinions about it, but I wanted to see what you thought about that. Oof. <laughs> is uh... the gay flag... Okay, let's not even say trans. Is the gay flag political? Uh, no. No. I mean, like... It's a segment of our population that wants to be represented by it's a... It's a sexual orientation, but trans is like kind of like an extra step. Like, I mean... So you're kind of like careful. I'm I'm, I'm uh, treading yeah. carefully. You're like taking an extra step to like. So is in a way kind of like a identity statement. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then like, is that political? Probably not, unless you're talking about equality. I guess. Right. So I don't know. I I'm not sure if that's like a political statement or not. I would say that. Nintendo is probably fighting with some people they probably like a small a very small population that they just don't want to be fighting with because yeah. they just have like a huge amount of power. That's actually a really good way to put it because that's pretty much what they said is that they just don't want to have social commentary about their game with this like as part of the commentary, which I thought that was weird. Uh, but uh, Van is right. Like they've been removing dicks from their content or like custom made content for years, but they have like censorship. In God the, damn it! I won't stand for it any longer. <laughs> in the Wii U, there was uh, like a, a village type like little thing that came with it. I forget what it's called, but it's like just a channel of the Wii U where you can go and you can draw or um, part of some of the games too. That if you're playing like let's just say Yoshi's Woolly World, 
and you wanted to like talk about the game, you can go to this, like this message board like area and just draw whatever you wanted. Some people were just drawing Yoshi like holding a dick, like and all that kind of stuff. That's a political statement. Yeah. I've ever heard one. They, Yoshi with the dick. Yeah. We all know that Yoshi is a does not identify as right. a male, but right. anyways. Uh, so this goes back to even more recently, at least in, in this era of consoles, to 2014 with the Tamadachi Life that came out on 3DS, where they were they didn't even have like the ability in that. So in that game, it's uh, I don't know if you know, but like you could be your me, and then you can like. Make your me however you wanted to, a guy or a girl, depending on, it just depends, whatever you wanted. And then you could have a relationship with somebody, but it only was hetero relationships. So, of course, like, people that aren't represented that way or don't feel that way um, went out there and they, they definitely, like, were the vocal minority in a way, but in a good way almost to, like, push a company that's been forward so okay so what do you want here because like if you have the gay relationships everyone is going to make it a meme on the internet so hard like let's just put it that way so like okay all of these streamers soda pop in uh everybody is going to be doing these like gay relationship streams almost out of mockery so it's on the 3ds it's like impossible to stream that isn't it nah dude you can like i mean they people stream i don't know games people stream uh mobile games uh it's not incredibly difficult so i mean do they really would they rather not be included or have it be made a mockery of i mean i i think that's the question they need to be asking themselves here. I see what you're saying, but <clears throat> overall, they won out. They pushed Nintendo to put out an update for the game that allowed for that to happen. And so, even a 3DS game, which I didn't even know you could update. But anyway, they did. And um, yeah, so what I'm getting at is that at one point in time, something happened that uh, riled up some people as far as like their opinions on, on the that part of the your life. For yeah. us, uh, and it got them to make change. So, a company that is not known for changing just because they've come under pressure has done it in the past, has done it in the past. So, it's cool because this could get them to change. I mean, for them to remove that level for just a flag and it being a legit level, like it wasn't like a dick, you know, <laughs> anything. It was just a flag. I, I think it's interesting. I like Van's point. Compare it to the emojis with different skin tones. Some people use them wrong, but most appreciate the choice. Yeah, that's yeah. probably true. I was just kind of playing devil's advocate sure. like I do with a lot of these probably more heated conversations that people don't normally want to have. Well, I'm I like know you like... personally. and not saying that like your streamers don't, but I know you personally. I know you are pro whatever the heck you want as long as it doesn't hurt someone else. Yeah, no, 100%. Right. I'm all about doing what you want to do. I'm just willing to, like, have the conversation, yeah. I guess. So No, I appreciate you always being devil's advocate there. Um, so overall, do you think that... Do you think that the vocal minority, again, can move the needle? Do you think that they can maybe make some change for Nintendo? And do you think it even matters? I mean... Yeah, I think that Nintendo should just not be removing something, like, that small that's just a symbol of their group i guess i mean like if there was a swastika in there i would probably be singing a different tune um but it doesn't seem like a trans movement is a hateful movement right either, so i agree uh and so uh the twitter user that kind of like had their had their level removed went to twitter they got pretty viral there i forget their their name their uh, handle i think it's like wild sapphira or something but they even like followed up and like quoted their own tweet and went all as far as like contacting Nintendo and asking, hey, why did this happen? What is going on with this? And they, she got to a, or he got to a manager, whoever they wanted to be identified. And they, they said that, hey, we don't agree with this, but this is just how it is. Like even the manager agreed that they didn't think this was political and this is how it is. Just interesting. Let's dive in though to this uh, hungry box situation, dude. You gotta pull this video up because <laughs> oh, there's a video. Yeah, I'll our our there. chat will uh, probably get a kick out of this. I think it's very weird that right. uh, poor guy got crab. A, he got crab, literally. <laughs> so it should be right here. Yep. All right. You you talk for a second. This okay. Is... So basically, the really really short of the story is at Pound 2019, uh, which is a Super Smash Brothers tournament. For Super Smash Bros. Melee, I think specifically it was this tournament, though. Um, this champion, this player, he became champion right after he won. He shakes the guy's hands. And you'll see it right here. He wins right here. His name's Juan. 
Dedima. He wins. Shakes the hand like a great sport. So does. Oh, you got something thrown at him. What the heck? <laughs> He's, it's almost like from a movie. It's like WTF? Who threw this at me? Who fucking threw this at me? So he's cussing. The announcers are doing a really good job, like yeah, making it unawkward. You know, like he looks like he's about to cry, which I'm not hating on. Even if he did or didn't, I would be so upset. <laughs> cool. Anyway. So, this guy, he's on Team Liquid, as you can see there. Um, he was playing against Mango, who is known for being on C9. Uh, two very popular pro gaming teams, as some of you may know. I mean, if you're on Twitch, you probably have seen those names, you know, those team names. Um, but thank you, Van. My, my mom does have a Ew. very hungry box. <laughs> damn. God damn it. Um, so, basically, he was going under some heat because he's a pro Jigglypuff player. And Jigglypuff, if you've ever played Melee... Absolute cancer. It's Why? Not, not very hard to play. Um, so basically, um, did you read that little synopsis about her? Well, so yeah. So he wrote an essay in 2018 to explain himself because he came on. He's been coming under heat for using Jigglypuff for so long. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, like basically, Jigglypuff has a crazy amount of air priority. So basically, um, even compared to Marth and stuff her feet can like hit from so far away. So you can basically do side air, which is just where you put your feet out and just uh, completely block off parts of the stage if you like time it right. And it's like really overpowered in my opinion. Like, okay. for, like for the skill level, especially in melee, that's like a very high skill cap with like lots of like technical glitching shit that you do that you don't need to do with Jigglypuff because you're airborne most of the time. Yeah. Um, but, uh... So even if someone is a, playing the cheese character, <laughs> the character is still there. The game, they need to move the fuck on from Melee if they're going to complain. True. I mean... Dude, like, Ultimate, she is not like that. No Johns. Uh, <laughs> God. That's so funny. Uh, no Johns is, like, a no-complain thing from, uh, old Melee communities. It's funny that Melee oh, knows that. I didn't uh, know that. <laughs> I didn't... Oh, so, John is, like, uh derogatory term for someone that uses Jigglypuff? No, it's oh. what you say no Johns because someone named John was a big, like, toxic player and it, you don't John. So it's oh. like you don't complain, basically. Thank you, I agree. Um, but, yeah. So he gets a crap thrown at him. The guy gets... I mean, you can see on the video, guys, but, like, the guy got almost immediately thrown out. It's not hard to identify. If you saw, like, the crowd... There's like a hundred people there, but not enough to like where he could hide away, like toss that like crab and then run away and like duck his head. Um. Are, is there like a significance to the crab in particular being thrown? Because I don't know. Me neither. I was thinking about like how could that be a significant thing? I looked in the comments of the article that we were watching. So the crab is a meme. We got Sky up in here. Uh, telling us the crab's a meme. Okay, okay. If you guys could enlighten us some more on that, that'd be interesting. Um, but, man, I, I just think that it's bull. I, and I don't care <laughs> if he's using a cheese character. He's playing in a game that you can't really patch. That's just how it's going to be, dude. Everyone can use him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> fair enough, crab rave. Fuck yeah. Crab Royale. If you guys haven't checked out that <laughs> game, along with Tony Slopes. Those are our, our two big meme games that we talk about. Close to every episode. Those so. are the big games coming out in 2019. For me personally, I don't know about you, Trey, but I'm looking forward to Tony. I Slopes. think they're everyone's big games for 2019. I think you'd have to be living under a rock like a crab. So. For sure. <laughs> Most anticipated vans on that wagon. See, I mean, we got some people, some fans with some uh, some good taste. Yeah. Let's just put it that oh, yeah. way, guys. You guys are my friends. <laughs> So just keeping on with the Nintendo stuff, Nintendo Switch is going to China. So this is a big deal, guys. The China's had a ban on consoles from 2000 to 2015. Uh, they up the uh, took off the bans, um, but even after that, so even so, think about in 2015, we had Xbox One, we've had PS4, we've had. Um, 
Switch came out in 2017, but over the last nine months, the Ministry of Magic, no, I'm <laughs> the Ministry of China, <laughs> the Ministry of China had put another ban on video uh, consoles again, and now just now they've up 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 the ban, taken it off, uh, and now the Switch is like the first console to be invited back in to China. Uh, I thought this was very big. Uh, with 1.4 billion gamers in China, it's huge. Um, so Imagine living in a country that there's prohibition on gaming. Dude. Yeah, dude. I they, mean... <laughs> they, they had studies that came out. Of course, we have studies that come out every week that tells us beer is bad, which we know it's not. Beer is great. <laughs> we know it's not. <laughs> uh, but when this got announced, dude, China... I mean, Nintendo's stock... For, for the Tokyo Stock Exchange went up 17% and it went up 12% in the US, which is a ton. Think of a, a, a company yeah. that's worth like $200 a stock or something right now. It's insane. Um, that's a huge increase, the biggest gain since Pokemon Go in 2016. And uh, yeah, I think that this is very good news for the Switch, but this comes at a weird time because it just got announced that games got consoles got unbanned after nine months of hard banning on everything, again, after that 15-year stint, that they will not allow any games that have blood, have poker, mahjong, mahjong, sorry, I, I said that wrong, and uh, corpses. So they're banning any game that has that. Now, Mahjong? Yeah. They don't like mahjong? <laughs> There's something to do with gambling within, in Asian countries, I, I believe. But yeah, it's it's crazy. So I, I felt like Nintendo having their Switch come over, more kid friendly games, more kid friendly company. This is actually a works perfect, right? I mean, they're gonna sell the heck out of Breath of the Wild with zero blood in it. True, true. I mean, I mean like if they have really strict censorship, I mean the Switch is gonna be king. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like if if you can't have blood, you can't sell Call of Duty. Yeah. Then you're gonna be selling Switches. Yeah. So, I mean, that's cool. So, they actually also, if you guys know, like Tencent is the big Chinese company out there. They actually bought like a, a huge amount of, of stock in Riot Games, which is the creator of League of Legends. Other games out there, they're worth like $500 billion, one of the biggest gaming companies in the world. Uh, they they um, couldn't even get Fortnite or Player Player Unknown's Battleground into China. So one of the biggest companies in China, one of the biggest gaming companies in the world, couldn't even like patch a specific version of Fortnite for the Chinese market because the the Republic of China, I believe, is what it, who what the government name of the government. They wouldn't allow like even a patch of a, a game that is so cartoony like Epic's Fortnite uh, into China. So I thought that was interesting. Like, dude, we have, China is just, is a completely different world. Like we think that we got to go to Mars to see an alien planet. All you got to do is go across the ocean, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just so much different. I mean, and we got Van up in here saying that skeletons are illegal. I believe so. Cause skeletons are corpses or were once a corpse, right? So even something as small as that. So would they have to, would they have to Patch out dry bones because the <laughs> the Nintendo Switch that's getting sold in China comes with a test version of New Super Mario Bros. like Ultimate Deluxe or whatever it's called. So would they have to patch him out? The poor little guys in the in the first couple castles. Hey, Nintendo's not so China friendly after all. Oh dude. my god! It turns out, turns out. I just thought it was really interesting that China banned consoles for fifteen years. Think about that, guys. I know a lot of you guys are out there, our, our, our viewers, watch uh, uh, on a PC, play your games on a PC. I know, Trey, you're mainly a PC gamer. But for a, ga a console not to enter China that wasn't, like, Chinese-owned or Chinese, like, had China had, the government had their hand in it, for 15 years is huge. That's PS2, GameCube, Xbox 360, Xbox, Xbox, original Xbox, PS3. That's the start of the Xbox One, PS3. Four generation. Those Man. poor Chinese bastards. Man. I can't even believe not having like a GameCube. Exactly. I think what is the point of life <laughs> if you really didn't get to wave and dash on someone's ass and some melee? Dude? Man, that is insane. <coughs> 
So you can catch up with the chat if you want. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think not. Van just has an interesting point that yeah, Chinese cards for Magic the Gathering have alternate art, alternate art to remove that skeleton uh, situation. Probably. I mean the old sets had a lot of graphic shit. You know what I mean? Like um, like Ursa Saga had a lot of kind of like graphic yeah. depiction of like metal being born into like people and stuff like that like um yeah you're and, right. like i just wonder how much of that got over there you know what i mean like especially in like that invasion kind of era of those cards but yeah that's not here nor there so metal uh we all know mortal Kombat is not going to china <laughs> that was... Dude, they're gonna get a nintendo switch edited port of uh Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. Nintendo Switch edited port with like all the fatalities removed, all the blood removed. <laughs> it's literally when you punch, it's just gonna be like hitting like a stuffed animal or something. I don't know. Well, dude, I <laughs> saw this episode of a show the other day. It was like a documentary. I don't remember what it was about, but they blurred out the dead bodies. So I'm just saying, like, <laughs> what? The censorship for American shit is. Were you just like, watching like a weird porn? Did. Uh, <laughs> What? <laughs> no. 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 Okay. Uh, last thing I did want to say is like I did say earlier that they banned all co all consoles, but they didn't ban handhelds. So Nintendo worked with the gover Chinese government to come out with. I just learned this today, so I had to like share. But to come out with a Nintendo DS Lite. Did you have one? A DS? I had a DS, 3DS. And oh. I, think, I don't, maybe I did have a regular Well, DS the DS is like looked at as, the DS Lite, DS era is like looked at one of the best catalogs of all time <laughs> for gaming. Like it's, it's up there with Super Nintendo with a lot of people and like the PlayStation. Anyway, they came out with the IQ, I-Q-U-E DS Lite because you couldn't call yourself Nintendo because you had to work with like the Chinese government to come out with this. It is just Crazy man, it's madness to us because we don't live that life or in that. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's some crazy propaganda kind of. But I mean, who knows what kind of deals are going on, like right. with Nintendo and an American government that we don't really hear about. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that that might not have been mainstream Chinese news. I, but maybe it was. I'm not that plugged in. So. Yeah, yeah. Lots of interesting stuff I learned this week, everybody. <laughs> as you can see, about uh, gaming in China. So, let's move on, though. I'll toss it to you for sure for this. I mean, it's your, up your alley. Uh, yeah, so Fortnite Avengers crossover. Um, the teaser showing Captain America's shield on uh, No Skin. Um, the last Avenger event. Um, you could grab, like, the Infinity Gauntlet. So, it would be, like, a point of interest that would show and drop on the map. You would grab the Infinity Gauntlet. You transform into Thanos. And you could, like, laser beam people and, like, uppercut them and shit like that. I... Is it is it gonna be like the same? Do you think as the last time this happened? I'm thinking that it's gonna last be year? really similar, just okay. because the main teaser has been um, the Stormbreaker at, uh, that was like Thor's hammer, or is that like I thought his hammer was it's called like, like is it his replacement hammer? It's his hammer, and he had like a uh, uh, no, it's his axe. Wait, is it his axe? Yeah, so I mean... Sound off in the comments Because, I mean, like, the hammer was called, like, Yarnborn or yeah, something I'm, like that. Harsh Yarnborn. I'm embarrassing whatever. myself not knowing this, because yeah. I, I love the series. Dude, you should not be embarrassed. This is not something that you need to care about. <laughs> this isn't real life. This is uh, the weapon of a mythological... Well, I just mean my, my fiancé has gone to Electric Forest every year as Thor for, like, four out of five years we've gone to the festival, and she gets pics with everyone. Anyway... I, Mjolnir, 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 hey, yeah. Mjolnir, we everybody, go. we got to the, do is think about my fiance. We got the Mjolnir cosplaying as Thor. <laughs> you know how it is. Uh, so, I'm thinking that it's going to be similar, just because they were have been teasing um, the shield and the ha the axe. So yeah. I think that those are probably going to be like crucial components of the mode or whatever. Did you see so. the one released today? No, I don't. Iron think. Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, that okay. looks cool. I didn't see it. Let's let's. I'm gonna look it up. Pop really it quick. up, man. Popping it on up. So, is this like a separate game mode, or is it just like part of the Fortnite like canon at this point, where like it is just gonna be part of like this season? N no, it, it's a separate limited time mode or whatever. Okay, okay. Uh so it's a mode. It's not like battle royale hundred player mode. Yeah, it is another battle royale hundred player mode. I think they'll have 
uh, solos and squads separately for this one. Um, Interesting. But, uh, do, is this toxic for the game, or is this just fun? Do you think it's just a fun? It's for kids, you know. It's not meant for like the hardcore or tryhards. And there's they do new limited time modes on the regular. So it's like they did one recently that was like the floor is lava. And basically, over time, lava would just like fill in the lower parts of the map up until, until the entire map was covered in lava, and hopefully someone was killed by then, you know. So, oh, okay. Um, Interesting. So it it could be fun. I'm probably not gonna play a whole lot of it. I'll probably try it out just to see what's up with it. But yeah. uh, it's fun just to see your like your favorite game or your current favorite game that you're playing a lot just reskinned like in a way or like a new mode added. Yeah, I've I, always liked that about games that are like lifestyle games like this is like you're playing this game and some people are only playing this game you yeah know? i mean i honestly have a preference and like a tendency to go more towards traditional versions of games so like with magic the gathering i either want to play like 60 card like uh competitive decks or like not at all you know what i yeah. mean like um or like limited uh just i like the fairness of like competitive formats and like I like putting myself up against people, like, around my skill level. So yeah. when it comes to stuff that's, like, meant for kids, I tend to just, eh, that's not my thing. Yeah. But it's it's cool. You but know? It, you invite it just because it's... Yeah, you know, no, it brings more people in. Like, I, yeah. I think it's a good thing. So yeah, cool. it launches uh, the 25th and 26th is the Avengers release. Yeah. So just in time for that, um, more Fortnite news. Yeah. <laughs> God. No, that's uh, fine, dude. So we have the Fortnite Creative World Cup. Um, it's a new event to the that was added to the $100 million prize pool for the Fortnite World Cup. Insane. Yeah. So much money, dude. Well, it's <laughs> psycho, dude, the amount of money. And it, that's all Epic's money, too, which right. is really what's crazy about it. But um, there's five trials created by five content creators, which is it's just like a very weird format. for a, It's a $3 million tournament. And basically, they just make courses and death runs, you know? And then they're judged by Scissors, who's a, like, a content creator and, like, streamer that makes crazy courses. Okay. Or, like, crazy death runs. So he's known for creating that. Yeah, content. exactly. Okay. And I think that uh, it was, the entire thing was inspired by him. So that, that's kind of cool that it's, yeah. like, uh, prizes for people that aren't just these cutthroat aimbots, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's more of like a platform in-game kind of situation. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I guess a little bit more news, just to keep it rolling really quick, uh, over 12, 000, or 1,200 cheaters were removed from the Fortnite World Cup. <laughs> so is it from just the content creation part, or is it from the, just this the is World from, Cup? This is from the actual competitive wow. part of the game. Um, 1,200. So the content creation part hasn't even begun at all yet so um it's pretty crazy news that, that there's this number so there's this twitter account called per aspect dolphin and basically yeah. um they sell a bunch of cheats and recently they started outing all of these pro fortnite players what that have been buying Just the cheats huge lists of these guys wow. you know and um it's fucking psychotic dude um the, the number <laughs> of cheating van says they should have a separate tournament for those 1200 dude, participants dude who cheats the best that'd be <laughs> sick dude that's like so what i always say about professional sports is they should have a steroid league yeah. <laughs> Like, where you, and there's no rules. I was rules. literally gonna say that. No fucking rules. What the fucking fuck? just cut each other's fucking heads off. That is hilarious. And then there's like traditional league where we drug test and shit over yeah. here, but no one's gonna watch this. That would, be, <laughs> that would be insane. Like, who's not gonna watch the guy that is on, like, the whole. Do the two teams on in football crashing into each other at like twelve more miles per hour? Oh yeah, there's no offsides in this. It's just a fight. <laughs> it's just a fucking fight at this point. It's like hockey without the puck. What is up, Uber Go Supro? <laughs> um, so the cheaters caught will forfeit the prize money uh, that they earned. 198 prize earners were Whoa. caught. Oh, what the fuck? I mean, I think there was 3,000... How many actual people have been in this? And that have made money? Yeah, I'm okay. trying to figure out exactly how many of that is, but... Um, yeah, anyways, there's been, like, a huge witch hunt on Twitter and stuff like that. There's actually a guy whose name was cleared who um, you have to be in, like, the top 
four uh, slots to qualify for the World Cup, and there was a guy that actually got one of those four slots that was totally accused of cheating, and his name ended up being cleared. So it's kind of crazy. There was a huge witch hunt on him, and it's like really interesting that he ended up not even being a cheater. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it's so like... Do you know how, like, he proved it? Uh, it's... I'm sure that everyone's watching him at this point. And this, okay. um, that cheater stuff, um, with the Aspect Dolphin came out before this tournament. Okay. So, I mean, the... I, I don't know if that list had anything to do with Epic's decisions to take money away or whatever, but... If they stopped testing for roids, baseball would be oh good Oh my god. Remember back in the day? I was just thinking about this the other day because my co-worker's been talking about his, so- or his fo- uh, softball league or whatever you call it. The baseball softballs. Uh, and I've been just thinking, like, I haven't really been a fan of baseball since Mo- Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, <laughs> dude. Like, remember back when they didn't care and, like, you could just... Bad away. <laughs> Remember, man, the game was good back then, Gosu Pro. I, I'm with you. I, I stopped liking the the, sh- the baseball after Ken Griffey Jr. was out of there. <laughs> oh, man. I think there's, like, like isn't Ken Griffey Jr., like, amateur, like, card worth some money now? Like, <laughs> no, know. not at all. <laughs> ba- baseball cards have paint. Why? Um, because no one collects them. Yeah. It's like, uh, okay. so the collectible trading card games the market has gone up whereas like you can't fucking play with a baseball card and i don't give a shit with any bats yeah like, uh, that's okay. true but so just some more fortnite news i just wanted to bring up just because it's a constant conversation here on totally games cast every it seems like almost every few weeks now we're hearing about this but crunch crunch has been reported on some that spotlight's been shined upon Epic this time, your favorite game right now, current games company, they are dealing with a huge article, expose that came out on Polygon, where they interviewed, I believe it's 12 or 14 current and former team members, I'm losing my page here, but where the team members were, the the employees were working 16 hour days, 100 hour work weeks. Can well, you imagine? Well, if they fucking have this many people working this many hours, they can fix the fucking game, dude. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, listen to this, dude. I knew Here's you my Fortnite it. fucking rant, dude. Okay, so they said they fix traps. Like, they do this thing where, okay, it'll be... So you know how Fortnite's built on a grid? Like, square grid. Basically, you can put a trap between it's the grid somehow. Yeah, so everything's a square. You know what Pathetic. I mean? Pathetic. Dude, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> Apex Legends is like a cylinder. You know what else is what like a cylinder? What are you saying? Like a dick. Dude, <laughs> oh my god, I hate you so fucking much, bro. <laughs> Dear god, I'm cutting my own dick off. <laughs> Do it live. You might get a few more viewers. I mean, maybe. I mean, like, before I get fucking banned or whatever, bro. Oh, my God. But at any... Anyway, sorry. Oh, my... Sorry to railroad you hard, Playboy. I I don't even know at this point. So, no, no. So, anyway, so they can put put a trap between it, and they said they fixed this issue. Today, this was... Okay, so the fix was a week ago. Still broken, dude. Like, happening multiple times today. It's just like, they... Basically flat out lying about bug fixes. So okay. fuck these guys. <laughs> well, so I, I now correct me if I'm wrong, Gosu Pro, but like as far as like like engineer software engineering is, you get a ticket, so you get like compl- a certain amount of complaints. Somebody passes that on, delegates it, of course, an actual like developer or someone, and they solve it, but only to the best of their knowledge, and they have to do, like, testing back and forth. We don't we don't make games. What I'm saying is, like, they probably did solve it for a certain amount of, like, actual situations where, but, like, there could be a few more bugs. That's what those are called. Like, that's why they're called bugs, because there's just a few. You can only kill all, like, 80% of the cockroaches. <laughs> I, I believe that's how it works. But, um, so, Fortnite, dude, the biggest game... Of, like, the last three years, the biggest game of this decade, if not generation, right? 250 million program uh, programmers. I just saw your comment. So, 250 million monthly users or registered users, I should say. Man, this game, this company to have, like, this giant expose, I feel like it's not hit, packing that punch like Rockstar and Red Dead 2. That's kind of what I was thinking is... I, I didn't read this article, but it feels like it's almost writing in the wake of these other things being, like, popular exposés, like, um, 
you said that was it Damon Hatfield that did one of those or was that uh, who was your the Jason Jason, Jason Schreier. Schreier. Yeah, 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 Damon yeah. Hatfield is my favorite video game person of all time. Yeah, okay, but, okay. But Jason Schreier so, usually writes it for Kotaku. This time it was Colin Campbell. I do have to give him a shout out and interrupt you again. Uh, but Colin Campbell from uh, Polygon. He needs to get credit as like a journalist, you know? I love to give credit to where it's due. So, but as you were saying, sorry. But uh, I think that right now the World Cup's coming up, which is a crazy amount of money, the most that's ever been on the line of any video game tournament. The game is in a state that's like, I wouldn't consider esports ready for something that big, you know, with that much money and that many people that have put that much time and in investment into it. I think these numbers are pretty fucking crazy, but I think that if they can't, they have a huge amount of income, hire more bodies, as these this uh, note says down here, and just get get shit done. You know what I mean? This is like so much money on the line to like have a fucked up game, in my opinion. But yeah, guys, this is required reading, right? This is something that is if you're a fan of the games industry, this is really good to like keep in mind when you're buying games or you're supporting games when you're voting with your dollar i think it's really important uh because there's companies out there that do it right i'm not saying epic is wrong because in every single interview with all 12 of the current and former epic games employees they say they aren't being forced but they're kind of being manipulated or like Okay, you're not going to come up for the promotion when the this patch is over, this season's over. You know, you're. you're I mean, these are dream jobs, so they're competitive. So I mean, obviously, there's going to be someone that's willing to work more than you. You know what I mean? So I, I just mean, if you're not willing to work for the the money, then someone else will. I, I don't see a the way that this article or the notes are p p like portraying it isn't like super forceful, and it's kind of like okay, well, you're going to get passed up. Like, you know what I mean? But, uh... Yeah, it, I mean, it just... There's a lot... It's required reading because it shows... You if you, you have to read it. It's, sure. like, 3,000 words. Like, I'm not going to be able to, like, get all the, like, the actual fine-tuned details. But 100-hour work weeks, you're crying at the end of the, your shift. I'm not saying that this isn't a dream job. I'm not saying that these people should be grateful that they're working in the video games industry. I'm just saying that, like, holy moly, man. If I'm asked to work a Saturday, which I have been one time... In my entire team, my entire like jobs, like ever since it's been in existence at this company, <clears throat> the big company here in, in, in Des Moines, Iowa, but I've been asked, our team's been asked to work one Saturday. And when I got asked, I was rewarded way, I, like, I, way more than I should have been. Sure. So, so like I was given like this, that, the other, whatever. I don't even go, need to go in detail, but like I think that these people are probably being rewarded, but it's so many weeks where they're working Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. And there's quotes and there's like, if we got a Saturday off, I would feel first of all guilty because half my team would still be working, even though I was able to take it off. And I would also feel like I fell behind in like the manager's like, like love, you know, like, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, you fall in favor of the, the management. I yeah. Mean, Cause there is like a pecking order to that kind of shit. So, I mean... I, I don't know. I, I feel like if they had a good game, I would feel more sympathy for them. But right now, it's kind of dog shit. So it's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, you're still you're still playing a little bit, right? I play a huge amount. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love An it. Absolute ridiculous. Well, we'll moment. come back next week uh, with a spoiler-free my thoughts on Avengers. I will not say a single word. I'll just tell you if I like it or not. Um, and then also, I want to hear kind of about like this mode. If it's gonna be any fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm legit interested. I, I was really interested last year when they came out, when you could be like Thanos. Yeah. That looked so cool because you could jump up super high and then just like crash into the, the ground. Oh, yeah. No, it was super cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's required reading for y'all if you wanted to see it. Uh, what else do we got here? We got some peeps talking up in here. So Ghosting Pro is just giving us some light on the whole programming situation. He's saying bad programmers fixed bugs, little bugs, good ones write new code. Okay. So bugs c only get... Like, kind of fixed. Yeah, so, I mean, that's... Yeah, you're probably right. But when you're not... take, I'm not going to, like, throw, like, what you write under the bus because I have no idea. Literally no idea. Because um, I, I know you work for, like, an insurance company or something. I don't know. But um, when it's a like, video game, isn't there, like, more moving parts than, like, a website or, like, a... I don't know, for sure. Yeah, but I'm sure that there's still, like, taking the path of least resistance in a lot of cases mm -hmm. and doing, like... Uh, Frankensteining it, I guess, would be a way to put it. Where they're like, yeah, it's a band aid, and when enough band aids get applied to something, it falls apart, you know. Um, so I think that maybe it's a case of 
not enough oversight on the, like, it's, the whole thing is, it's impossible to, like, have, like, o- oversight over so much, like, code and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I, I, I agree. It's, like, it's just um, too much information be- for you to, like, know, memorize. Because, like, a lot of the bosses don't, aren't programmers. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So it's harder for them to, like, directly, like, be like, oh, you're kind of fucking this up, dude. Wow, like, that's so know? funny you put it that way because that's how I think about, and I think that's how, like, the farther up the corporate ladder you get or whatever, I think that's more and more and more of what you think about your, your managers that know exactly how to do your job, they just know how to manage, depending on the manager, of course. I think that's super interesting you say, because I'm not, I don't feel that way about my manager, but I do understand and can relate to her not knowing my job exactly. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. Uh, real quick, <laughs> You're thinking PUBG is gonna come out on top, man. <laughs> I mean, it's huge in in like other territories, right? Europe, I think. I, but, is it not beating Apex now? Oh, it's probably beating Apex. It's always it's gonna be steady, but I mean, I think, Apex is still a better game uh, than Fortnite. If, and if I was going to quit, yeah, I mean, numbers don't lie on that one. But uh, <laughs> fucking, if I was to quit Fortnite, I would play PUBG. Probably. Really? Yeah. But it's so slow in... in yeah, it's third person. I, I just don't want to play first person. Okay. Fuck, fuck looking through your gun. Man, when you're reloading an Apex, a shotgun, like, you can't see anything. That's what I'm saying. I hate it, dude. And then you have, like, <sighs> like the sight around your gun that's, like, blocking your shit. It's like, I, you, I like having the constant, your character's in the way. And it's just, like, always an obstacle to work around, not just an obstacle that pops up. You know? I'm, I'm not wrong. I'm not going to disagree with you one bit. You know I come from a Gears of War background, which is all third person, so I'm, I'm totally with you. Uh, but, yeah, let's dive into, like, the last couple things here. I got to get out of here soonish. I'm going to a concert, like I said, at the top of, show, top of the show, guys. So, again, thank you for joining us so late, or early, excuse me, on a Wednesday. Uh, Persona 5 Royale got announced yesterday, or I think it was earlier today. So this, we've been talking about this, I think, uh, a, a couple weeks ago on the Gamescast. They they announced that this game was good. There's going to be two games that get announced at the end of April for Persona 5 fans. Uh, PlayStation 4 exclusive. PlayStation uh, Persona 4 was like one of the best games on Vita. It's like this crazy JRPG taking place in a, I think it's like a, col- a high school, college, like type scenario but there's like obviously like demons it's like jrpg as hell okay uh, but anyway it's been one of name one like the best rpgs that's come out in recent years for sure the game persona 5 gold royale is like essentially like a game of the year edition it's going to come out later this year it comes out with a whole bunch of extra content and characters storylines uh extra semester it's going to be um, up for the PS4 Pro, so 4K resolution for all you resolution nerds out there. Japanese, Japanese date of later this year in October, and then US date in sometime in 2020. I think it's, we're going to get more details about this game in May. Uh, again, they're just like, they're doing an interesting job staggering these, this announcement. Because we talked about it at the end of March, like around the, the time we heard about Borderlands 3. And now we're talking about it again because they're still giving us those like little tidbits. And just something to kind of like, uh, transition us to uh, uh, next week's episode at some point is that Persona 5S is going to be announced tomorrow. And the word on the street is that that is going to be the Switch iteration. So, you know, is like calibrated for a, a weaker console, but this is going to be humongous because people loved Persona 4 Golden, the biggest, per, like most successful Persona game probably because it came out on Vita. So that portability is huge for this game. I mean, you don't really generally need a, a super strong console or a TV to play a game like this. It's like anime centric type thing. Um, so I'm hoping that for that personally, but the other, the, the probably, it's probably going to be Persona 5 Stadium, which is why I've heard from Barrett Courtney out there. Uh, shout out to him. He's a Persona fan from Kind of Funny, but he says Persona 5 Stadium more like a fighter. So, like, the there's so many characters in this game that, like, they have all these different power-ups and stuff. And we talked about Joker last week. Yeah, so, and Smash Bros. Yeah, Joker's in Smash Fi- um, Ultimate now so he's available <laughs> i haven't played him yet have you no i okay. have not played smash bros i can't pick it piranha up piranha plant yeah <laughs> i didn't even play it i downloaded piranha plant i didn't never even, even download it. piranha plant you know what i need to do more often is play that game with friends when they're at my house instead of like jackbox or whatever just because one 
Oh, hey. oh hey. Thanks for the three months <laughs> there. Scared that Uber. <laughs> oh, dude, do you like the new update for the fucking uh, sub? It's like fucking. I did it for Mitch. Oh, you did? No, I mean, he loves <laughs> the fact that I smashed my fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was your video. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so. Got it. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah, I, I wanted you to talk toward this last topic here. <laughs> what in the so, world? So, the joy of sex category has been removed from Twitch. And I think that we, as a community, as a Twitch community, need to be outraged by this. So, one of the most popular... Uh, streamers on Twitch, um, Soda Poppin, is outraged by the removal of the category. Um, the, it was a, originally an obscure game that no one played on Twitch. There was like some sort of educational sex game. Like, but, and apparently the TOS for Twitch says sexual content is allowed as long as it's educational. So, Wait, so it's not, so it got banned when it shouldn't have been banned? No, the game was not banned ever. But oh, the category. The Sorry. category. So basically, <laughs> he would just go there and do just chatting and <laughs> the joy of sex with like 50,000 people. Wow. So, like, it, he would be like the only person in this category. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, where you have a chat with 50,000 people, you can't even see what anyone's saying. You're just trying to see like blocks of like the same comment, right? Yeah, it depends. Okay. So, I mean, he could be doing slow mode and he could also be doing sub only. Oh. So, that would reduce it to for someone that has 50,000, like 10,000 people talking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm and the like, yeah, exactly. It's the met of sex. <laughs> but uh, anyways, he streamed over 120 hours in this category. I, I actually think it's... I saw this in this Kotaku article. I'm sure, like 1,000% sure it's more. Because I would see him do sitting there for like four hours a day. Like just wow. talking talking in the joy of sex. He would do his unboxing. So the pop it? Soda Poppins? Is yeah, that what Soda you said? Soda Poppins, yep. That's cool. I, he's a big time streamer, so he's just like in a category just because... Yeah, it's a meme. Okay. So, I mean, that's like the, the idea. is Got that it. He wasn't even like really doing anything wrong. He wasn't, wasn't like a huge sexual content, but maybe there's something that I can't think of that was there was a problem with it, but uh, I don't know. Um, he was, Interesting. So, Soda was proud of the category, and... It's uh, sad that he's being censored this way. <laughs> <laughs> Our homeboy out there sort of poppins. He needs all the help we can get to get subscribers, to get viewers. Yeah, you know? sub to PewDiePie. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. When you said that, I had a memory of like the last time I heard that, and it was not in good context. It I'm was sure some PTSD. You like. <laughs> That one guy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys. Uh, so, that was episode 19. Did we do you good? Did we do you well? We did them dirty. We did them dirty. We okay. did them fucking dirty. We looped them up and down and <laughs> fucked them straight up. Sorry, guys. This I am supposed to be more PG than that. <laughs> I'm already in Jackbox mode. Yeah, that. no kidding. I'm actually leaving, guys. I'm going to leave y'all. Are you going to play Jackbox for a little bit? I think I'm going to do some Jackbox for a little all bit. Right, I think all I'm right. going to kick it. Like, uh, uh, Gosu Pro and I are heading out to a concert here in Des Moines, Iowa. San Holo. It's going to be great. Do, do me well. Do me dirty. Do me well, daddy. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm so going to enjoy this EDM. No. It's a beautiful day. It's like 69. Nice. No. Yeah, it's like 69 degrees out right now here in Des Moines, Iowa. It's beautiful. I'll stay hydrated. Not going to rave too hard. Got to go work tomorrow. But thanks for joining us for Totally Gamescast episode 19. Trey's got the edits this week. He's going to murder it like he always do. Um, you can find me at the image here. You can find Trey at you know where. But... 